What is going on everybody? I'm your average gamer. Of course, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And in this video, I want to talk about something kind of controversial and that is what the game of the year is going to be. Now, to be fair, I don't know all the nominations and what they're going to be, but I think the only two games that really stand out to everybody is Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok. Now, after playing both games and putting a bunch of time into both games, I want to give kind of my opinion on what I think is the better game. Before I start talking about either game, I should let you guys know that I am a huge Kratos fan and a huge God of War fan. And it'll, I might be a little bit biased towards some of the things that I'm saying, but I also am trying to keep an open mind. I'm a gamer, okay? I love video games. That is the one thing that I keep in mind. Just because I like God of War and Kratos isn't going to be my main focal point uh, in this video. You know, I want to talk about all the great thing Elden Ring does, the time I spent playing that game, and, you know, all the good times I've had. When it comes to Elden Ring, I did enjoy it. I played it the day it came out. I spent the 60 or $70 on release day, played it immediately. I wanted to go in there um, with my own expectations. You know, I didn't want to, want to watch somebody else play the game or anything that would kind of taint how I play the game or feel about the game, if that makes any sense. Because a game like Elden Ring, where the company is from software, they make a lot of hard type of games where an average gamer, in my opinion, might not find the easiest time playing the game. Not only that, I want to point out that the story can be extremely hard to follow. I understand that I'm not the smartest person in the world and a lot of like Elden Ring fans are be like, oh, well, you're just dumb and blah, blah, blah. You're right. OK, but at the same time, I'm not trying to sit there and do homework and look up a bunch of different things to figure out lore. Maybe sometimes, depending if it's like a um, like a side mission or depending on what it is, you know, I like that type of stuff, for example, in The Last of Us 2. You can figure out about the bad guy Isaac uh, in the very first couple of chapters when you're playing as Ellie. You don't even really get to meet him, but you get to learn about his background, his story, and all that just by reading some things. I am aware that it can be like that in Elden Ring where uh, you can just read a text or something like that and it, you know, you'll get a lot of background knowledge. But there's so much lore in Elden Ring where I got lost and confused to what I was doing, who I was talking about, talking to, and that's the type of game, in my opinion, that demands several playthroughs, or you just really, really, really being involved in that type of stuff, which is cool. I think the lore itself is really, really fun, but I don't want to sit there and have to teach myself about any of it. I'm the type of person that I need my hand held and it be told to me. Now, when comparing the two worlds between Ragnarok and Elden Ring, it's not even close. Elden Ring definitely has by far one of the best open worlds ever. Like, not even close. It is one of the most beautiful, epic open worlds where you can do anything. Um, and th there's, like, pros and cons to that where you're exploring. That's exactly what this game is, you know? So, if you're stuck somewhere, you're supposed to go explore somewhere else. There's no sense of direction. There's nothing that tells you where to go or what to do. It is, you know, it's your own backyard and you you just got to figure it out. Me, this being my first From Software game, okay, I definitely had a little bit of challenge in the beginning. I did end up figuring it out. I am, like I said, a gamer. I will always figure it out. Uh, but the one thing about Elden Ring is that I never was excited to wake up and play it the next day, if that makes sense. You know, I was always kind of eager to be like, oh, okay, you know, I want to know what bosses I want or, or are going to come up next or the armor that I'm going to get. I'm going to try to play this specific play style. But it was never super, super exciting where it's like, oh, I, I have to know what happens next. Now, to talk about the combat of Elden Ring, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I found it extremely underwhelming. A lot of people might hate that I just said that, but to me, it's... You know, you, you spend a lot of that time just buffing yourself to go fight an enemy and hit them one or two times. Um, I don't know, you know, and after you beat the game, which you spend all game trying to level up these stats to use specific weapons, and, and sometimes it takes a minute because the higher level you are, the longer it takes, which is, you know, pretty normal. But say, like, you need one or two points in a specific stat, you don't want to go reset all your stats just to go use the specific weapon. You know, it's going to take some time. By the time you're actually able to use this weapon, you may not like it. Now your stats are a little bit messed up because you're trying new builds. Um, and then the, the biggest problem I had was 
you know, the game gave me quite a bit a challenge. It wasn't like the hardest game I've ever played, but you know, there's so many times where I was like, dude, this game, I can't stand this game. I hated the two on one boss fights, but I prevailed and I did it. I beat the game and I did a lot in that game. Now say you finally beat the game. You put in all this time to, to finally finish the game and you unlock a new game plus. So you want to do a second playthrough to use all the armors and, and weapons that you got throughout the game. You started it up to only realize that this is too easy now. Like, you are just too overpowered. The weapons that you have are just too good. You also spent time in the game to get better at it, uh, working on your dodge mechanics and just timing and all that good stuff. Um, that was the problem I had, was, you know, it was this pretty challenging game, and it went from that to being too easy. And then I was... It's too demanding to start over unless you're looking up a guide on what to get, where to go, you know, all that type of stuff. Because I don't remember where certain thing was. I don't remember much. I just remember a lot of my first time experiences walking into a cave and finding a big old monster in there, which became a very common thing in that game. But, you know, it's not something I complained about whatsoever. I always had fun challenging myself and being like, okay, what monster is going to be here the last thing that i want to bring up about elden ring is why i feel it got as popular as it did if you look at the game now i'm sure there are quite a bit of people playing it but nowhere near what it was when all these influencers and streamers were playing the game but that's going to happen with any game just look at call of duty uh you know you have all these popular streamers playing this game it's going to bring life into that game regardless also, I see so many people saying it's like, well, you don't like the game because you're bad at it. I don't understand that concept. Being good and bad at the game is, I guess, all mental because people say you're bad if you use these specific items that the games give you. And it's just like, bro, I don't care. You know, like, I don't care. For the, all those people saying that same thing, play this game, rag, play God of War Ragnarok and give me God of War. You know, and sit here and tell me that it's an easy game. You know, like, there, there's a huge learning curve in whatever game you play. Did I struggle with Elden Ring? Some bosses, for sure. I was sitting there for an hour or two. But to think that you're not going to sit here and struggle on Give Me God of War, you're sadly mistaken. Now, to talk about God of War Ragnarok, it isn't, like, the greatest game I've ever played. I think that the original does a lot of other things better. One of the biggest problems I have with God of War Ragnarok is the boss fights at the end when you're fighting Thor and Odin. I talked about this in a video. Here I am being such a huge fan and I have a huge problem with how this game kind of went with things, you know. To me, you when you fight these huge name gods or bosses, I feel like there needs to be multiple stages. Um, there needs to be some tricks up their sleeves, stuff like that. In this game, it's just one and done. And I was extremely disappointed by that because they hype up you fighting Thor and Odin for four years and then you do it and that's just, it's it. Like, everything that you've been waiting for is done in one fight. I feel as if the reason I feel this way is because of all the crazy stuff that happens throughout this game, you know, the stuff that you're able to do. And again, me being a huge fan only amplified that effect. So here you are going through all these crazy things throughout the game, and then you fight these bosses that you've been waiting for for so long, and it's one and done, like I said. To give Elden Ring credit, I do believe that it had the most influence throughout just, I guess games in general so if that's how you want to look at game of the year for sure I'm not saying that game or Elden Ring should not win game of the year by by any means it's just I see this game get so much credit and I feel as if a lot of the things that are being said are what streamers have said if that makes sense you know because as much positive things as I hear from it I don't hear any negative things about the game and there's nothing wrong with bringing up the negative things about the game here I am talking about the negative things of one of my favorite series ever. To compare both the games, it's not fair to either one of them, because for example, God of War is a more narrative combat thriller, I guess, because you want to know what's going on. The combat's insane. The better you get at it, the better that your experience is going to be. Now with Elden Ring, it's the complete opposite. Again, everything about how the game is is fine, but what I'm trying to point out is that you can't really compare the two like one-on-one. -on -one. Because they offer two totally different experiences, right? And that's where I give a lot of uh, Elden Ring credit. Because for a game that I never really played or, or something I never really got into, I beat it. And I put a lot of time into the game. But I am just very stubborn. That's who I am as a person. 
Would I ever play the game again? Maybe someday. Whereas you'll see me continuously playing this game, not just because, again, I'm a huge fan of it, but I, I enjoy the combat. As soon as New Game Plus comes out, there's a lot of experimentation and stuff like that. So long story short, do not let anybody influence your decision, right? You need to play the game and you need to decide. If you didn't play the game, you can't give an input on it. I'm sorry. Just because you watch somebody else play the game, it's nowhere near the same thing, right? Uh, and another thing is, you should be able to point out more than just one thing. Like, don't just keep quoting what all the streamers are saying. Well, it's a beautiful open world. You can do this. It's one of the most best open worlds ever. Yes, it is. It really is. And I understand that being the main focal point, right? But for a game that I like, I can list 10 things that I really, really like and 10 things that I'm not a huge fan of. My whole point is there's going to be a bunch of people that sit here and say that the open world exploration is the greatest thing ever. And to some people, you know, they don't, such as myself, don't like the feeling of being lost and not knowing what to do the entire time, you know? Um, as my as my girl Tina said from Wonderlands, no one likes being stuck, being stuck sucks butt. <laughs> okay, like, if that isn't the quote of the century, I don't know what is. Anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Of course, as always, I shouldn't even have to tell you this. Be respectful. I'm going to delete any shitty comments I see. I don't I don't deal with any of that. We're talking about video games, for God's sakes, right? You don't have to sit there and be like, well, what I think is the best game because of this. No, just sit there. Tell me how you feel about something. Uh, tell me why you like it, dislike it, or tell me that you disagree or agree with any of my points. You know, this whole video was just to spark a conversation. Anyway, I love y'all, and I hope you guys stay smooth. Peace.